Hello, my name's Bob Green from Adept Scientific and in this short movie I hope to explain to you the basics of EndNote. When you take on a research project you will go and find lots of pieces of information from different sources like books, articles and other web sources. You'll need to manage these and handle them and find them later on when it comes to writing your paper and that's where EndNote can help. It can help you manage them and then when you come to write it can make the writing task so much simpler. The first thing you'll need to do when you start EndNote is to create a container to put your references in. This is called a library. You need to give it a name and decide where you're going to save it. First we'll maximize the window. There are three modes for working with EndNote. I'm going to take you through the integrated mode, so we'll just change to that to start with. In this mode, we can go online to gather new references, but we can also see the ones we already have. Let's take the example of this book is one that we've read, we're needing to cite it later, so we want to get it into our EndNote collection. Of course, EndNote does give you the option of typing references in yourself manually. and for some of these reference types you may well have to. To manually add the reference you would simply enter in the information you know about that reference. You could continue typing in all the information for this reference and indeed you could add all your references through this manual method but most users would rather let EndNote enter the information for them. As it's a book a good place to start looking for it might be the British Library. Now we know some information about the book and we could indeed type in the author, the title or the date. But we also know the ISBN number. EndNote Search has found one item and we now have it in our collection. In the reference tab at the bottom of the screen we can see all the information that's just been brought in for that reference automatically. Scrolling down will take us through the various fields. As this one is fresh in your mind at the moment it might be a good time to add any little comments or annotations that you want to contribute to this reference. These could be added to the research notes field. By clicking the preview tab we can see what it would look like when we cite it in Word. There are more sources available through this method than you can see on the left hand side. You can pick them from a bigger list by clicking on more. I'm now going to hide the search interface to show you another way of getting references into EndNote automatically. This is actually more commonly used and it's via your web browser. There are lots of sites out there that are geared up to provide you with reference information. This is just one example. With most of these sites you identify the ones that you want to send to EndNote by ticking them. The site will provide you with a method for getting them out, which in this case is download citations. We choose to include the abstract and then download them to EndNote. And here they are. The way that we view things in the preview pane at the bottom of the screen can be controlled by the selection of a different style at the top. The annotated style is really useful for showing you a lot of information in a small space. If you've attached the full text to a reference that can be viewed very easily. So I've just given you a couple of quick examples to show how easy it is to get information into your collection of references. Now let's look at using that information when you come to write in Word. So here's the beginnings of our paper, only a short bit at the moment. At the top we go to the EndNote ribbon. To cite a piece of work that we have in our collection we go over to the left hand button. We want to cite that book, so we type in a piece of information about the book. 
we can double check in the bottom half of the screen that it's the correct reference and then we can insert it. EndNote puts a citation in where our cursor was and also starts off a reference list for us at the end of the document. It's just as easy to put in multiple citations. All the selected references will get added at the cursor point in Word. This example has been written using a version of Harvard writing style, but there are actually over 6,000 different styles in EndNote and it's easy to change to a different one. This is an example of a numerical style. We only have a few references in this simple example, but when you get a lot more references you might want to organise them. EndNote gives you the ability of putting references into clusters or groups. You can make as many groups as you like, for whatever reasons you want. So there you have the absolute basics of EndNote. Getting references in from different sources, and then getting them back out into Word when you write. A really, really useful tool. Well, I hope that's helped to explain the basics of EndNote and that you've seen how useful it is. Here's the website, so you can visit it now, and that's where you can purchase the software.